Facebook at RNZI Pacific News if you want more of our latest news and information. Kona Modi, this is Dateline Pacific from RNZ International. I'm Johnny Blades. In this edition, a call for child psychologists in Fiji to deal with mounting abuse cases. Solomon's PM urged to press on with an anti-corruption bill. Racism claims over mispronunciation of Pacifica names in sport. Development consultants has changed fundings getting stuck. And Solomon's operating theatres back online. <laughs> Fiji is tackling an apparent spike in cases of child sexual and physical abuse as doctors call for more child psychologists to help victims. Police last week released figures showing there were over 2,500 reported cases of sexual assaults in Fiji in 2015. A doctor and reporter to the Minister of Health, Reati Mataika, says the higher number of cases doesn't mean it's a recent phenomenon but that people are more confident in coming forward and reporting cases. She told Alex Perite she's happy people feel safe to come forward. So just in the last few years, we've started to protect them, and that's when the numbers have sort of started coming in, giving us a sort of a truer reflection of what's actually happening out there. And, yeah, so that's what we're seeing, that most of them come from those kind of broken families, you know, being looked after by other family members or friends. And, uh, yeah, that's the thing that social welfare is doing now is, is trying to alleviate the factors that we have already identified, eh, such as unemployment uh, for the family, uh, you know, like the parents are not there most of the time or because they're trying to make a living and then someone else comes in to look after them. So we've come up with child protection allowances, uh, which helps with, uh, you know, it gives the family some allowances for the child's uh, food, uh, living expenses, you know, if they don't, if they can't earn enough money for the child and they're usually away looking for, for a job. We've got cases where parents have been found to be guilty in the yeah. sexual abuse of their children. I mean, so surely there has to be some more basic level of, uh, of education and awareness here. And I think we've got the, the minister herself, Rosie Akbar, warning parents and guardians that, that the government won't hesitate to take negligent parents to task. Do you know any more about what the ministry is planning to do there? In regards of prevention, trying to prevent it, I am aware that they're actually trying to introduce a sort of good parenting classes for young parents and also trying to introduce this also into high school, towards the higher levels of high school. That's, that's the two programs that I'm aware that, that's you know, coming out soon. But uh, to the acute problem, I, I just know of the child helpline that they're doing. And they're also trying to involve the ETLK affairs to try and get the message out to the community. Uh, it's a bit difficult tackling the squatter areas because there's no structure to the community. Like in a typical Fijian village, you would have like the Turanga Nikoro where you would go and then, you know, ask them permission to talk to the community. And then, you know, the, the hall and everywhere where you go and then the information gets through to everybody. But in the squatters, it's, it's sort of different because there's no clear structure of who's, you know, the community leader and everything else. So uh, I think that's a big barrier to trying to get the information through to those sort of settlements. Eh? Uh, but I know that they are trying to work through there by getting community health, from outside, community health workers to come in. You're a doctor. You, you, you see cases day to day. I mean, what sort of reaction in general do you get from the children. I mean, when something so devastating as this happens, is there a complete loss of, uh, of trust in the family? Are they afraid to go back? Um, how do you deal with those more problematic cases? Oh, there's a big, um, big gap that we have uh, here in Fiji, and, and I, you know, and I'm hoping that this is something that we can direct our efforts to in this year, in the coming years, is having some sort of uh, counselling for the children that are involved. Yeah? We have a lot of counsellors in Fiji, but uh, unfortunately there's no child uh, psychologist or even a psychiatrist that's employed by the ministry, both in the Ministry of Health and the Ministry for Women. Uh, so these children, they get counselled by general counsellors, but in regards to, you know, how they cope, how they live, but having worked in Australia and looked at the resources that they put in into counselling, you know, I recognize that it's a, it's a really big area and a lot of our children that have been abused 
I'm traumatized for life. Eh? I've uh, the, the the most severe case that I've had. I've seen her again, and and unfortunately, she was also physically abused in addition to being sexually abused. So she had mentally regressed. So she was a class five student, but by the time I saw her a year later, she was had a developmental uh, age of a class one student. You know, because she was physically abused also. But in regards to all the other children, there is a general distrust. But I think the main factor that plays a very big role is, is the family where that child is from. Right? If it's a, a, the parents are quite solid and they have a very close relationship, those are the ones that I see that, that do quite well when we see it for.